Hi, I'm Paul Robinson, and today I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm standing outside Jones Hall, home of the Houston Symphony. And in a moment, I'll be going inside for a conversation with Hans Graf, the conductor of the Houston Symphony. We'll be talking mainly about the orchestra's forthcoming season, and it's Maestro Graf's last season as music director. We'll also touch on the highlights of his long tenure in Houston. You're coming to the end of your tenure with the Houston Symphony uh, yeah. next season. Yeah. So you've been here, or you will have been here, 12 years? 12 years, yeah. And that's a long time for any music director in any one place. But looking back now, uh, what do you consider your greatest achievements on the one hand and the greatest disappointments on the other? It's very difficult to, for me to judge this and as I'm not yet ready to do this look back. I have still mm. a year to look forward, which will be a great year because we have very challenging, beautiful things there. Not, not to name others, but not to name Wozzeck, which is... Yes. But I think for the disappointments it's easy to say. When I came, this was an orchestra which was in great blossom with Christoph Eschenbach and did touring. With, but I did not know is that this touring and the spending of the years, of the glorious years, had um, made a little bit of a financial osteoporosis. So the bones were breaking in 2004. We had a tour planned to Europe with a three days residence in Vienna with three programs and a music fan. We had to cancel this tour. So this threw us off the rails we were. And it took a couple of years to get back to the state of mind of our society, of our orchestra, of our city, which would allow and endorse playing of the orchestra elsewhere. So we went to Carnegie, which was very good, and that triggered other things. I'm now not unhappy with uh, our out of Houston activities. Our Houston activities, I think, were maintained in great shape. We did many good things. It's too much. Twelve years is is hundred programs. So what should I pick out? I remember one thing which was an unexpected success with the audience, and I'm very grateful for that. We did Bruckner Nine in the first half, and the fragments of the last movement in the second half. With my explications to explain what happened and why didn't he finish it, and then we played the Te Deum. His wish was if. I die and can't finish, which he anticipated. I do not want the symphony to be looking downwards at the end. It should be looking upwards to the... So it should not finish with the it slow movement? No, it should finish with an optimistic piece. So play the Te Deum, as I dedicated to the Lieben God. So we played this. It was an extra long program, and I've rarely gotten more unexpected great reactions of people who had discovered the side of Bruckner, who had discovered Bruckner. This was a great thing I liked. I liked also, beside many concerts, uh, more and more solid um, uh, confidence in doing operas in concert in my, as I feel, unstaged, almost staged version, with singers in my back with the orchestra in the dark, singing by heart, having monitors in the audience and playing. I do not like any opera, even if it's the most beautiful opera on the earth, with singers standing and reading from a, from a, ma, uh, from a, a piano score, because this is not drama. They have to do this. We did Bluebeard that way, with beautiful lighting by a great Texan artist, the art guys, who had rapped gauze or what do you say, this white thing around the, the legs of the, of this chairs of the musicians, and with 100 chairs with LED bars who could emit all different lights were computer controlled and with every opening of a door and other wave of light ran on the orchestra. Did not distract it, did enhance it, and it was great. But we had 
Fleur Espagnol, Ravel, in such a way, and we will have very dramatically what's it next year in this way. Well, that leads naturally to my next question, <coughs> because we all worry about the future of classical music and whether we can generate the audience for it. And I was reading just this morning, as a matter of fact, how the younger generation is looking for uh, something less formal than the average symphony concert, something with more visual stimulation. And that's exactly what you've been we created, trying out. We created in our subscriptions the Sound Plus Vision part of six concerts. We have most different ways of visualizing. We had a firebird, not just with pictures, but with the beautiful sketches by Gancharova and, uh, and Baxt for the original productions in 10 and 26 in London, which each figure, each per per person coming, or personality, per uh, persona, each role coming, gets the costume sketch up there. And you see Cachet with his fingernails like this. I am against uh, capturing people's attention with pictures and they don't listen well anymore. There's a struggle of and a balance to find to, to defend my music against their optics. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very interested in doing things like this. And I had two weeks ago in Berlin a uh, quite interesting concert around Hindemith's little opera Sancta, opera Sancta Susanna, which is really I've never played, 25 minutes, of a nun who wants to make love to the Savior and is. Uh, walled in by other nuns and ties there, <laughs> preceded by Sor Angelica Puccini mm -hmm. and followed by Puendo Lextas of Scriano. <laughs> so it's a, a, a program of ideas which has an appeal to people who want more than just music. Mm -hmm. But music has to be good. Well, you also did a, a famous production of The Planets in Houston too. And yes. you made a DVD and a CD-ROM. We, we brought it on tour to the UK, we brought it to Carnegie, and that was a very big success and very beautiful done by Duncan Cobb. But there are not many pieces which lent themselves to such a thing. Mm -hmm. There was another try here which I liked a lot. There's a German photographer, musician, who did a series of 400 pictures for the Alpine Symphony from the Bavarian Alps, starting at night and ending at night. And he was commanding them here on his computer. He could follow the music, so I didn't have to. So we did Alpine Symphony, and this is nice. Now he did Beethoven 9. I'm not so much with that. Beethoven 9, we paired with uh, Transmigration of Souls, and there was a video by an Australian uh, photographer, black and white video, of shades of people going by. You don't see a, a person, you see though. And that was very, very moving. But you have to be very careful to not to do harm to the music and not to do harm to the optics. The Alpine Symphony, there is a program, but Beethoven yes. 9 has yes. no program. Yes, right? and I would do that uh, for touristic reasons to the Fountains of Rome, <laughs> to the <laughs> Feste Romane and the Pini, and probably, but already reluctantly, to La Mer. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a, a, a travelodge. Uh, uh, what is that? Right. Uh, 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 ad uh, movie. It, it's, no. it has to respect the quality of the music. I would yeah. never do that to a symphony. I would probably do it to some romantic pieces which tell a story. I was intrigued though with uh, a concert you did here uh, several months ago now, I guess, in the Rachmaninoff Festival. You had screens up uh, on either side of the stage and you could see the pianist up close, and you could see the see you from the, the front. Sorry to interrupt you almost. This is true, we have this, but there was the, the screens were only in the back of the pianist, because he can't play if he sees himself exactly. on a screen, yeah. which is a tenth of a second late. Yeah. It drives him crazy. Yeah. So, But we do have this, and we yeah. don't have it often, and uh, it is fine, and it, it, gets people to feel the orchestra much closer. But it's you can't overdo it because you get tired of it also. You have right. to reuse it sparingly. Yeah, and you used it to some extent uh, for the Rachmaninoff Isle of the Dead 
yes. to to yes. see the the painting yes that, yes yes that inspired rock yes Rock. this is i think legitimate yes yes i agree finally what's ahead for hans graf after you leave the houston symphony <laughs> will be i will be a touring conductor i have not when I, when I put all those years together of music directorship, I have 39 years of leading position. And, and does it have to be? Always? <laughs> I'm so happy if I go to another orchestra where I do not have this problem, this question, and this, and this, and this. I like conducting to a certain extent, <laughs> but there are other things in life. You know, the music director responsibilities? Yeah, no, not so much. No, no. Yeah, but they're part of the game, but you can conduct nice things without being a music director. <laughs> if they if they call you, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to do an update. We'll have to come back and talk to you and uh, see how it's going. Yeah, and if you were to know something about what's again, most welcome.